what's up guys today we're going to be talking about setting controls now i know most of you already know how to do this stuff but i cannot tell you how many emails i get every single week about simple questions and simple procedures like setting controls it's probably one of the easiest things you will ever do whenever you set up your arcade or your system however people get extremely intimidated we're going to do we're going to set controls for main globally across the board i'm going to show you how to set controls specifically for one type, one game and how to set controls maybe in bizhawk and other emulators such as nestopia and so on it's really easy really simple so let's get started so the first thing we're going to do i'm just going to go ahead and launch hyperspin the best front end out there, in my opinion. So if you're not a part of the Hyperspin community, which is dying, please, please jump back on board. You won't be disappointed. So let's hop over to, we're going to hop to our main. We're going to cover AAE in a minute. So let's just select a game in main. And I think I accidentally cleared my favorites for some damn reason, but let's just hop to my favorites. And I did. I cleared my favorites. So let's find a good one. Let's find. Uh, let's not do Street Fighter. Let's set uh, Street Fighter 2 Alpha. And we're going to go ahead and launch it. Give it a second for the. Try to spin. There we go. And once it loads the bezels, and the, there we go. So we're going to just hit tab on our keyboard. Now let's explain what you're looking at. Input general means I'm going to set the controls for every single emulator. I mean, excuse me, every single game that uses main as its primary emulator. So whenever you set input general, it's going to automatically default to the controls that you define within this menu. So the first thing we want to do is we want to hop down to player one controls by using our uh, arrow keys. Now I have it set to use the, the 360 controller. So I can use the 360 controller to, to do that. And I also have the tab set to this button here so I never really have to have a keyboard now as you see I've already got it set but what we're gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and set it for the 360 controller plus the iPad so this will be for your arcade controls we're gonna use a standard iPad layout no modifications so I'm just gonna hit enter press up on the analog stick I'm gonna hit enter again press up on my d-pad so I can use either or and press up on my arrow key. I'm going to do the same thing again. Press enter, down on the analog, down on my D-pad, enter, and down on the arrow key. I'm going to keep going. Left, left, left. Right, right, right. So now, basically what I've done is I've set the controls for the analog stick or I can use the D-pad, or I can use the arrow keys, which is the standard default for the iPad. Now, whenever you have a fresh setup of main, you're going to look something like this. Now, the uh, right up, I always, anything with a slash, I hit delete. Now, if you hit delete, it cancels those controls out. However, if you think you're ever screwed up, you can always hit delete again and it goes right back to its default. So I'm just going to hit delete, 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 delete. And you can do this for any key. So these are already set for the iPad, as you can see. Joy 1A, Mouse 1A, Gun 1A, Control, Alt, Space. These are all set for a 360 controller, the light gun, the mouse, and the iPad control. However, once we get down to right here, it's only set for the 
360 controller, which we're going to modify right now. So we're on button six. So it goes, uh, let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we need to set seven and eight because most IPAC layouts have eight. So we're going to go hit delete, hit enter, seven. Button seven on the IPAC is a C. We do the same thing again, eight, and hit it again, eight. So now we've set player one to use a 360 controller plus the iPad controls. Now there's a couple other buttons we want to set when we come down here where it says start, hit enter, press one, that is your start button on the iPad, press one again, hit start. On our select, we're going to hit small back button adjacent to the start, press enter, and five. Now you might think we're done, but we're really not. We need to set two more important buttons, and that would be user controls. See right now it's only set to player one start, which will only accept the 360 controller, which we're going to hit enter, press start, press enter again, press one, which I just took us out. I uh, just killed, accidentally killed the rocket launcher. So we want to do the same thing on player two. Like two is already set to two. I'm going to hit enter two and enter start. We go down to our coin button. Coin one is our back button. Our back should be right there. And hit enter and five. I'm going to do the same thing on player two. Hit our back button. And our coin button on the iPad is a six. Now, no matter what controller you're using, this could be a tank stick or one of those cheap, um, I forgot what they're called, uh, $30 arcade kits from Amazon. Uh, no matter what you're using, you set your controls just like that. Just hit your tab key. Now, we're going to define what the other menu is. So let's hop, let's find a really good one such as, um, oh that's not good. <laughs> that's our uh, adult section. So let's find Smash TV. Smash TV is a great game however if you remember on Smash TV you did not have fire buttons you had two analog buttons. So we're going to find Smash TV. I'm going to show you how to set controls outside of the default and set them specifically for Smash or any title that you want. Oh, oh we messed. There we go. Smash TV. Now we're going to go ahead and add this to my favorites because uh, that's one of my favorites. So let's go ahead and start Smash TV. So now that Smash TV is loaded, it's going to default to those standard buttons that we just set. But we don't want to use those because in Smash TV, you use one analog to walk, another analog to shoot in eight different directions. And you can't just sit here and hit A to shoot. So what we want to do is hit tab, except this time we're going to go to input this machine. Now input this machine means we're only going to set the controls for this game. Uh, forget the standard, just this game. So we go to input, now fire up, I'm going to hit up on the analog, on R1, I mean on the right analog, fire down. Fire left, fire right. Now to move, I want to use the left analog. Up, down, left, right. Set over here to player two. I'm going to do up, down, left. Oh, you missed suit. 
that's a great example. I messed up. I hit shift and the button. So if you mess up, just hit delete. It's that simple. So we're on what? Left. Uh, fire to left. Fire right. So now I want to select the move up, down, left, and right. Now all the other uh, controls we can leave the default, such as our start and our coin. We're going to hit tab. Let's go ahead and insert quarter. And so now our player can move and shoot just like he did in the real game. Now this is how Smash TV was supposed to be played. Otherwise, you would be you would be walking and only shooting in one specific direction. Now, if you're on an arcade, what you can do is use one player uh, player one joystick to move, player two joystick to shoot. You use the same technique to set controls. I'm going to exit the game by holding down my coin button. It takes us right back to our favorite front end. So that's how you set controls in MAME, but not all systems are running MAME. So let's open Rocket Launcher. Let's just take a look at some of the emulators being used. Now, I am a huge fan of BizHawk and RetroArch. I would highly recommend letting RetroArch uh, handle your control layout and by default I have it set to automatic control schemes so I would highly recommend leaving it to that but for other systems that are using other emulators so let's just take a look at Nintendo now for Nintendo I'm using RetroArch which will automatically detect and I do not have button swap turned on where B is over here and A is over here I have it reversed where B and A just like the original joystick. But let's say we want to run Nestopia, which is another great and very accurate Nintendo emulator. So if Rocket Launcher UI is telling you Nestopia is your primary emulator, we can click our folder here to take us directly to Nestopia. We want to open Nestopia. Now it might want to open full screen just like it just did. Hold down Alt and hit Enter. It's going to take us out of full screen. We're going to go to Options, Input, and now as you can see, this is set for the iPad controls. Now, unfortunately, Nestopia isn't one of those great emulators that allows you to have a multiple inputs per, per input, but I can hit Set All, and if you look down here on the left, it's asking me to press a button, so I'm going to hit Left, Up, Right, Down, Select, Start, B, A, B, A. That's it. So now I do want to set player two. And I will hit set all again. Left, up, right, down, select, start, B, A, B, A. And I want to let that timer run out. Now I do want to unset that button right there, the, the mic button. That's it. I just set Nestopia for. Uh, two 360 controllers. Guys, it's really that easy. It really is. Another emulator that uh, you might want to set is I'm going to switch this back to RetroArch. And it's Super Nintendo. Now, it is also set to RetroArch, but however, we might want to run SNES Not X. Who knows? We're going to hit our emulator folder again, take us directly to it. And this is the Okay. Oh yes, I do not have my shaders turned on. So, input configuration. I'm going to do the exact same thing again, except this one's even easier. You ready? Up. One. Up, left, down, right, right. I messed up. I'm trying to go too fast. Up left, down, right, B, A, 
Y, X, start, select. Uh, which one do I want to use? Uh, left, right. There we go. I'm going to go to player two now. And I'm going to install my shader pack here in a minute. So up, left, down, right. Uh, B, A, A, Y, X. See, I messed up. So if I mess up, go back and highlight that button. Start, select. Done. It's that easy, guys. It is truly that easy. So what we really want to do is go back and switch, set this to uh, RetroArch. We're going to let RetroArch set our controls for us since they are... Uh, already properly assigned but let's say if you're running bizhog which i love bizhog i know it's not caught on as as popular as some other emulators yet but bizhog is extremely accurate especially for the saturn now we're going to launch a saturn game let's just launch something uh small We'll do 3D baseball. Now let's do it by size. Let's make it quick. Batman Forever. So we're going to let BizHawk launch. Now to set BizHawk, it's a little different, but much easier. And by default, Red, uh, Rocket Launcher will hide your mouse. Now we need to unhide our mouse. We don't have to, but we're going to. So if I right, if I right click on the screen, I'll see this menu but we can't track our mouse only by the highlighted menu items but if we hold down the e and the t like edward and tom our mouse appears if we hold it down again it goes away so e and t shows our mouse now we're going to right click on the screen go to config controllers now i've already set the controls but this will work the exact same way the second i highlight the the menu item up, left, oh, I messed up it. So I can go back, up, down, left, right, start, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. We're done. We'll go to player two, which is not set. So up, down, left, right. Move our mouse there. Start A B C uh, X Y Z L R. Click save. You're done. Isn't that easy? Don't let this stuff intimidate you guys. It is very very easy. Now. X pattern used to be the go-to standard. However, Joy to Key is so much better. Uh, Joy to Key does not mess up controller IDs and doesn't assign IDs just per the controller that you turn on. Joy to Key is just a great profiler that I highly recommend. It's only eight dollars. Go get it. You, you'll love it. So um, some systems do not support. Uh, joystick input, such as Daphne, uh, AAE, uh, maybe you want to set some uh, joy to key profiles for maybe uh, some computer-based systems. To do so, you just want to go to your global settings, third party, and make sure that your joy to, we don't want to be joy, sorry, your joy to key is mapped under joy to key, which I have mapped to exactly where it's at. And so I'm going to hop over to AAE. Now AAE does not support Joy to Key, but I do have a profile. Now, what you want to do is you hop to your settings. Excuse me, uh, mapping. You want to turn Key Mapper to True, Joy to Key to True. Now, I'm going to hop over to my Key Mapper, and we're going to delete this profile. So now it's gone. So under Joy to Key, we want to select New System Profile. 
And I want this profile basically to be attached to every single game within the AAE emulator. And simply because I only play a handful of games. So let's go ahead and assign it. Basically, we just want to double click. And this is our left analog stick. The stick one, stick two is your right, your POV is your your D-pad. So I'm just going to do arrow key left, arrow key right, press up, press down, head over to, if you want to use your POV, you can, um, if you want to use your D-pad, you can mimic those settings as well. You just double click it, hit the arrow key. You can have multiple assignments, so it's not a big deal. So now you can hop from your D-pad to your analog stick. Now for button one, what I like to do is I like to uh, keep the IPAC standard. So I'm going to hit control for button one. Now if you want to test your buttons, what you can do is you can hit your button and you see Joy to Key will highlight that button, letting you know. So I'm going to hit Alt, button three is space, button four is left shift, five Z, Now our start button is eight, so there we go. Our start button will be one. Our back button should be, oh, our back button is actually seven. So let's take that to a five. And six, this is five, six, seven, eight. So our right trigger is 11 so let's go ahead and make that a C and our I'm sorry that was our left trigger our right trigger will be a V so now this is set up specifically for one player IPAC controls so I can go ahead and now if you have two players hop over to your second controller you want to go to options under here you Change one to two, refresh. Now we have both controls and this should light up. Yay, look at there. So let's take a look at R. Oh, that's not correct. It's uh, D. D. G. R. Now, to be honest with you, there's not too many AAE games that support two players. These were the games that you would, uh, when one person would uh, lose or die, the other person, he'd have to move out of the way and another person would step in. So it's, it's kind of redundant in most, most cases. like my button's stuck. I'm just going to let that stay there. As soon as you close it, it will save. And if you want to test your, your selected profile, as you can see, it's letting us know what buttons we've pressed. It's a great internal test. Button. Really good. So now what we can do is we can hop over to our game and the reason why why do I like AAE, you will find all these games within the main uh, system. However, AAE does a great job of the bezels, the screen burn in, the the refresh, the slow refresh of the monitors back then. You'll see the trail. It does a tremendous job. So I'm going to show you. So we're going to go ahead and launch Asteroids. Loading complete. We have our original bezel. So now, just like main, we're going to hit tab, keyboard config, hit enter. Now this is already set. I've already set all the controls, but you would do the exact same thing. Press enter, press our new button. Now I'm using the D-pad, so I would press enter and press a new button. There we go. 
Now I can play AAE titles with my... Now, I should be able to use the D-pad as well. I'm using the left hand long, and there I am. I'm using the D-pad, which I prefer. So that's it, guys. That shows you how to use a profile to your, from your keyboard to your joystick. So I hope that helps. I really, really do. Um, you know, if, if RetroArch is your primary emulator, you really don't have to set controls. Just download your control, um, your controller profiles, which you can do within RetroArch itself on, under the update menu. But besides that, everything should already be set for you if it came from me. But if not, that is how you set controls. It's not difficult. Don't get intimidated. You can't screw it up because you can always go back. Hope that helps and have a good weekend, guys.